Um, if you are here this morning for the first time and you are visiting with us, we welcome you. If you are watching us online, we welcome you and thank you for joining us. Our backstage pass, if you have that, we'll be glad to meet with you and just uh, shake your hand and say, hey, thanks for coming by this morning right after the service. Uh, so one more chance to make those things happen if you didn't get them right. How many of you would like to have one more chance at something in your life? Raise your hand. One more chance. Some of you have done it right all your lives. Hallelujah. Congratulations. So I, don't, I don't need another chance. I got it. <laughs> Sorry. You're, yeah, nailed it. Yeah, you're messed up, but I got mine right. I made all the right decisions. Uh, I've done it all correctly. We're going to be talking about Samson this morning, and we're going to be finishing this up, and uh, two weeks ago, when Jeff shared and, and spoke with you guys about Samson, he left you and Samson with some hope. In verse 22 of Judges chapter 16, it says, But before long, his hair began to grow back. So that was hopeful. Trivia question for you. See if you have paid attention, any at all. During this series, Samson's strength came from his Bible scholars. That's what we have, Bible scholars in here, from his hair. And he got duped, though, by a lady, okay, a female named Delilah, and she had him to lay his head in her. Wow. And so when she did that, what we talked about a little bit, but we didn't really know exactly to the uh, pound. We mentioned it, but we didn't know. She, from all the rulers of the Philistines, she said, I will do this if you give me, and the offer was 1,100 pieces of silver from each guy, from each of the rulers, which comes out to 28 pounds of silver just to get this guy's strength taken away. So there's a lot of crookedness, a lot of weaving in, a lot of stuff going on there, and she got it done. They shaved his head, and last we were able to read about, he had his eyes gouged out. And they had him. And so that's where we are this morning. They gouged his eyes out. They bound him with bronze chains and had him grind grain, likely by walking in a circle for hours turning a millstone. So this man of great strength, this man who was dedicated to the Lord, this man who had taken a vow to be something great for God, had let himself be pulled into this trap. And he had found himself pulled into this trap by lust several times. But this would be the fatal blow. And so that's where we find him this morning. And the Philistines in chapter 23 had a great festival. In, in verse 23 of chapter 16, rather. Verse 23. The Philistine rulers had a great festival offering sacrifices and praising their god, Dagon. They said, our God has given us victory over our enemy, Samson. They believed that to be true. They believed that to be true. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, our God has delivered our enemy to us. The one who killed so many of us is now in our power. So they basically had Samson on display here. They were having a festival in honor of Dagon to praise him for delivering Samson to them. And to celebrate that. And in their twisted theology, they were celebrating the misery of of someone else. 
Then we move on. Verse 25. Here's where the issue comes in. Half drunk by now. Need I say more? Need I say more? We have seen those or been those who have been half drunk at some point, half lit by now, three sheets in the wind, whatever you want to call it. We've seen it and we know that's when trouble begins. And so for the Philistines, that's when the trouble begins. The people demanded, bring out Samson so he can amuse us. So it wasn't enough that he could be seen, that he could have his eyes out, that they could see him grinding grain, that they could parade him around. They wanted him to bring, they wanted it to bring him out among the people. So he was brought from the prison to amuse them, and they had him stand between the pillars supporting the roof. So in this temple, this temple, either a theater or a place of worship or whatever this big building's original use was for. They're having this festival and this time of praise to Dagon now, and they've got people everywhere. And so they bring him out front, right between the two main supporting pillars. Now, I know we're in Alexander County, but he wasn't going to be sleeping on those pillars. These were, that's a different kind of pillar. It is something that holds up. I know that was bad, bad. I know, but it was funny, but it was bad. So they stand him in between these two pillars that hold up where most of the weight is on the temple. Now something we need to understand is these people, these enemies, the Philistines, evidently paid no attention at all to the fact that his hair was growing and had grown back. They didn't see fit to shave him. They weren't worried that his strength may come back, and his strength was not from his hair, but because of his dedication to the Lord, and God gave him his strength. But they believed that because... They had shaved his head once. That was it. And so he found himself in this position of grinding grain. He found himself in this position of thinking about the consequences of his actions. How many sinners in here? Okay, hands down. How many didn't raise your hand? Okay. Because lines of sin. Everybody's a sinner. Everybody in here. If you, if I had to share with you my worst sin ever, how many of you would want to hear it? Raise your hand. You ain't going to. <laughs> but if you thought about your thing, your one sin, you wish you could take back your one thing, and there were consequences, you would do it like that. I'm sure there are days to this day that you may think about that or you wish you had that off of you. We see here that he is having to think about it every time he goes around that circle grinding grain. He has had to think about it every time they were making fun of him. He is absorbing those consequences. He is saying, Man, I really blew it. I should not have gone against God. I should not have allowed this woman to lure me in and break that covenant. These are the consequences I must pay. And we understand that we have consequences when we sin. But here, he is thinking about victory yet again. You know, when we say one more chance, this time of graduation, high school graduation, college graduation, eighth grade graduation, kindergarten graduation, preschool graduation, birth graduation, they got it all. And they make a Hallmark card for all of them. 
They make paper plates for parties for all of it. You were born. Today's your birthday. Woo. Have some cake. It's all talking about the future and the journey ahead. What lies ahead? The decisions you will make. How that will go. What you will be. What you will accomplish. And this week I heard someone say, how would your high school experience change, would it have changed if you knew then what you know now? Could I get an amen? amen. Woo! If we knew now, then, thank you, what we know now, it would be different. There would be some people that wouldn't have even gotten a blip on our radar. There would have been some people we wouldn't have even hung around, decisions we wouldn't have even made, but you don't get to go back and redo it. And the people that try to tell you what to do, you're just old, they're old, and you, you just think they don't know. But then you get our age and you go, man, they knew. They knew. And so these consequences he is having to endure, he is well aware of. And I would say that even during this time as they were being amused by him with no eyes and he would stumble and nearly fall and help him up. They would drag him out and not tell him he needed to step up and he would trip and people would laugh. And I'm sure he was mocked and spit upon and I'm sure that they even possibly went up to him and, and as they did, Jesus would just hit him and say, Who was that that struck you? You're so godly. Who was that? And he had to endure it. And so this morning as we think about one more chance, we find that he's standing before this drunken crowd, being made fun of. And if you've ever been made fun of or bullied or picked on, you know what that's like. Anybody ever been bullied? Raise your hand. Anybody ever been the bully? Raise your hand. A lot of same people. <laughs> it's a cycle. You get bullied, then when I get big enough, you're going to get some of that. Boop. Boop. Mm, there you go. That's how that rolls. But he's enduring all this and thinking, okay, all these people, oh, God, what can I do? And so he says, to the young servant in verse 26, who was leading him by the hand, place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. I want to rest against them. So we know that they were close together for him to be able to put his arms out and rest up against them. And so he did. Now, the temple was completely filled with people. So this was a place that was absolutely packed out to get a glimpse of this guy that their God had delivered over to them, this strong guy who would snap the cords every time they tried to uh, bring him in. He would snap the ropes. They would uh, try to go and get him, and Delilah tried to set him up numerous times, and every time he came out on top. And they wanted to see how strong this guy was. So they were making fun of him. How strong are you now? How tough are you now? Yeah, hey, I'm over here, look at me. Knowing he had just been beaten down. And there were 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching as Samson amused them. So you've got this temple, this building, completely filled with people, and then you've got 3,000 people on the roof trying to get a glimpse as he's out front. <coughs> Lots of people. And you have to understand, how long must he have wondered, was it going to go on? In our lives, sometimes maybe we wonder, how long is my life going to be this way? How long do things continue to happen because of something that 
has been done. Then, verse 28, Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. O oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple. Pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, Let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. In this one final act. Have you ever thought about in your life what your final act might be? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever had a time that you have done something, you have been somewhere, you've been a part of a mission trip, you have been a part of helping others, you have done something that all of a sudden it came to your heart and mind, if this was it, I'm good. If I did nothing else, I'm good. Lord, if you didn't give me another day, I'm good. You know, we think about what we need to do. We preach about who we need to be and how we need to reach out to others and the things we need to do. But have you ever given thought to one final act? One more chance. Have you ever thought, wow, if this is the last thing I do and I'm in a wreck and that's it, what would that be like? Have you ever given thought to me reaching out to this person as my final act of kindness? I'm good. Me sharing with someone about Jesus is my final act, I'm good. Me taking a stand for what the Bible says and what I believe in is my final act, I'm good. I don't know about you, but sometimes I am guilty of just blowing and going. Anybody know what that means, blowing and going? The only break you get is when you're switching gears or changing clothes. If you're trying to get to the next spot, get a kid to the next spot, go to the next place, get to the next visit, do the next thing. And sometimes we walk right past those in tremendous need. Sometimes we feel as though we have gotten away from where God wants us to be. So guess what? He can't use us. We're not where we're supposed to be. I have to get to this place before he can use me again. We see here clearly in the book of Judges that Samson knew he had messed up. And he dealt with the consequences. But then let's look at what he says. Sovereign Lord, remember me again. If you are here this morning and you feel like you're at a place that maybe you need to be somewhere different in your walk with Christ, maybe you need to say those three words. Remember me again. Maybe you should say, Sovereign Lord, God in heaven, forgive me and remember me again. And help all my final acts to be something pleasing to you. Because how many of you know when you're checking out? Anybody know when your birthday is? 
Seriously? <laughs> Who knows when your birthday is? Okay, if you don't, look on your license. And if you still can't figure it out, go turn them in. All right? Here's the thing. We all know our birthday. We know when we're here. We know when we came, but we don't know when we leave. And so we need to be open to every single opportunity, and we need to have tender hearts. I would share with you this morning that I believe part of the problem in our country is that we have hardened hearts. We don't love like we need to love. We don't care like we need to care because we're too busy. We're too tired. We're too exhausted. We're too on the go. And we don't even, we, we don't even know sometimes who's in need around us because we walk right past it. We don't even know who's in need around us because we don't know our neighbor. But I promise you if I said... Your last day on this earth will be July 17th at 9 a.m. You'd pick up the pace, wouldn't you? Have you seen that commercial where that person says, you're having a heart attack at 10 a.m. on a piece of paper? Whatever it is, you go, whoa. Samson knew this was his final act. This was his final prayer. What is yours? How have you spoken to the people you have seen this morning? Have you spoken to the people you have seen this morning? The people coming through that door, have you spoken to them? Many of you are so friendly and outgoing. Have you spoken to them? If you stopped at the store on the way in this morning, if you went out for breakfast this morning, did you speak with the people? Did you leave a 50-cent tip or a $5 tip? How we live our lives is very important. But how we leave this earth after we have finished living our lives is even more important. That's the biggest deal. You know... We have coined the phrase mead moments at our home. Anybody in here know what a mead moment is? Most of you do. Some of you have been hanging around us too long because you're beginning to have your own. I saw someone at the store earlier this week and had on sunglasses, and I said, Hey, what's going on? And I thought, Well, he's just wearing sunglasses inside. That's okay. He's got a piece of metal in my eye. I was like, Dude, you've been hanging with me too long. He said, I know, I know. But yesterday, at a basketball tournament, Chloe hurt her hand, and we came out to the urgent care. I thought, well, wow, at least we got one now close by. Whew. So we did all the stuff, fill out all the stuff, get ready to go back. And she said, now, what happened? And told her, she said, oh, our x-ray machine's broken. Can you go to the other one? And Chloe just looked at me, and she went, mead moment. But we were able to see some folks we needed to see. And that was just a, a little side funny thing that happened. But yesterday was a life changer for me and I think for Chloe. And we went to eat lunch at a restaurant. And for some reason we just changed our mind. And I said, nah, I think let's go to that corner place. It's a, a mom and pop shop, a New York pizza kind of place. And we went in there to eat and the folks were nice. I left something in my truck, and I went out to my truck, and I came back, and as I came back in, I noticed this guy coming down the sidewalk in an electric wheelchair. And it wasn't that he was an amputee. It wasn't that he didn't have any legs. He was about from his belly button up, and that was all that he was. He had no lower extremities whatsoever. In fact, he had a towel pinned to his shirt to cover all the stuff that he had going on that he needed to take care of himself. And he spoke so nice and he waved. He said, hey, you don't have any change you can spare, do you? 
so we went on and, and wound up getting some lunch for him. But I, I want to tell you, the thing that got me the most was the number of people that walked right by. Walked right by, walked right by. And didn't even speak. And we were waiting on our food and I told Chloe, I said, the owner walked out the door. And he was right in front of that business. I said, if he doesn't speak to him, we are leaving and we're telling him about it on our way out. And so as we watched him go out and I turned to look, I walked by and he leaned down, fist bumped him on the way by. He said, I take care of him all the time. We were actually able to talk. He is a Muslim. And we prayed together as we left. And I prayed in Jesus' name, by the way. But I looked at Chloe and I said, if that is it, then that's it. If this was our final act, it would be okay. Think of your day as if the things that happen, the people that cross your path, are your final act. We see here clearly that Samson says, Lord, remember me again. What would, that, what would happen if you said that this morning? If you said, Lord, remember me again. I want you just to say that. Say that with me. Lord, he knows who you are. What would happen if we changed that and we said, Jesus, remember me again. Say that. There's just something about the name of Jesus. And just as Samson was able to, to bring all that crashing down and bring victory for the one true God, not this Dagon who was a, a man's body on a fish, I mean a man's upper torso on a fish body. That's who that was. That was their God. The same way Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. In one act, he did that. And that was because he loved you. And that was because he wanted more for you than what you currently have. And we sometimes feel that we get stuck in a rut. But we know in the end, we win. Later, his brothers and other relatives went down to get his body. They took him back home and buried him between Zorah and Eshtel, where his father Manoah was buried. Samson had judged Israel for 20 years. Now looking back, did Samson do it all right? No. Could he have been more effective? Yes. But in the end, he came back to where he needed to be. And he did one final act to bring victory for the one true God. This morning, I wonder where you are with that. I wonder if we just need to smile a little more. I wonder if we need to look for those who are broken. I wonder if as broken people, which we are, we just need to say, Lord, remember me again. Bring some blessing my way that I might bless others. And by blessing, I don't mean financial. I mean by bringing people in who have so much less, who have such great needs that you can minister to them. If I said this morning, raise your hands if you believe you are a minister, most of you would go, well, I, I'm not really cut out for that kind of thing. I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I try to live for Him. I, I try to read my Bible once in a while. Or I come to church on Sundays. I just, I'm not really the minister kind of type. That's why we got you and Jeff. That's why we got Zach. That's what we do. This is how we roll. No, we're all called to be ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many of you believe Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? Raise your hand. Okay, leave them up. You are ministers of the gospel. Put them down. You don't have to like it. 
You don't have to want to be it, but if you are a follower of Christ, he says you are to go and minister, and that's what we're to do. Amen? So as a church, that's what we're called to do. Samson finally got it right after messing it all up, and that's what Jesus can do for you. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we thank you that through Samson's life, Lord, he didn't get it all right. But in the end, Father, he called on you again. Though the Philistines didn't even consider the fact that you might bless him once more. God, they didn't even recognize who you were. But God, you gave him the strength he needed to bring victory one last time through his life. God, use us the same way. God, I will be the first to stand before these, your people, you have assembled, called Cross Point Church, and say that I am a broken sinner. I sin every day. I mess up every day. I'm no better than anybody else, but I'm only the messenger. God, remember me again this morning. Jesus, renew my heart. Lord, I pray for all those that are here that, God, we would just be renewed, revived, Lord, made whole. Letting go of that sin, letting go of that past, moving forward for you. And, God, I pray for that one that's here that may not know you, Father, you would just move them to accept you this morning. May they make their way down to the front right here to my right, their left, Lord, you move them even now. But God, move us forward as a church on our knees. Let us come forward and pray. Let us take a stand for all that is right. Let us go out into this world and bring hope and love and comfort where there is pain and suffering. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand, please?